Hi guys, today I'm reviewing Oitra's classic series Oven Baked Polymer Clay. Please note all views in this video are personal and it's based on the review kits I received from Oitra to test. The classic series comes in a sturdy hard plastic blister packaging with a paper backing. The paper backing has an elaborate instruction manual mentioning the bake time and temperature required to bake this variant. This is a 100 gram packet or 3.7 ounces roughly and it also talks about the consistency of the clay, how to use it and store it as well. You need to tear the paper packaging and the clay inside is wrapped in a thin sheet of plastic again. I can see myself using the plastic blister for storage purposes as well. We'll recommend keeping the paper backing for later references if you're new to the brand or the medium. All variants have different consistencies and baking requirements, so it definitely helps to keep these manuals for references if you're using more than one variant from this brand. I have received 14 number red in the classic series for testing. So my reviews will be based on this sample only. It seems to have a high pigment ratio and will leave some pigment in your hands. So definitely wipe your hands and surfaces after use before introducing another color to the surface to avoid staining. I'll take a slice to test the consistency of this period. The color of pigments appear to be evenly distributed. Uh, I can't see any patches or sediments visible. However, it's a softer clay. It's easy on the hands for sure. Uh, and it's uh, clearly easy to condition as well. However, it's softer than the signature collection and sticky as well. I can see an easy transfer of thumbprints on this clay. So you can see that I've managed to completely flatten this piece with my bare fingers with close to no effort. Haven't used any pasta machine or an acrylic ro uh, roller in the process. So if you're thinking of making canes, I'll suggest leaching it first and then use it for complex techniques. I can see it being used easily for the Sutton slice technique. Um, I'll also be talking about the leaching of this clay later in the video. Okay, so I've decided to leach this variant to understand the perfect leaching time for this particular clay. That is a classic series. We don't want to leach it too much also because uh, it can lead to, um, you know, weaker or brittle pieces if we leach it too much. 
Basically, leaching is a process to soak up the excess plasticizers out of the clay to make it more workable for certain techniques. However, it can also alter the composition of the clay. So I suggest check the clay every 20 to 30 minutes so that you don't over leach it. Plasticizers are very essential for making strong pieces. So keep a close eye on your leaching time. So I'm rolling out the clay at a very thin setting for quicker and even leaching. Uh, right now you can see I'm just using a roller and it's easily spreading out with minimum effort. Don't bother about the bubbles. We will be conditioning the clay again after leaching and can tend to the bubbles then. Once I'm satisfied with the thickness of the sheets of clay, uh, I will now put them between two plain printer sheets of paper. Uh, just make sure there's nothing printed on it because you can end up with ink transfers onto the clay. So ensure that it's a completely plain sheet of paper. So what the sandwiching does is it will blot out the plasticizers out of the clay. We can place a couple of books also on top of it and some weight. So uh, and leave it for some time and just completely forget about it. Check every 20 to 30 minutes however for a blotting effect on the paper. You don't want to over leach the clay. Okay, so I leached the clay for 45 minutes. You can leach this clay to a max of one hour. Uh, ideally, not as long as that also, since we need the plasticizers in the clay. Um, you can see that there's oil and plasticizer stains on the paper. It leaves like a, a faint stain. The clay also appears very less glossy than before. It has become a lot more manageable and very less sticky. You can see how my fingers are just easily gliding over the surface. I will now have to condition this clay again uh, in my pasta machine this time since the constitution of this clay has changed after leaching. The particles of the clay need to be worked together again. Uh, this will only ensure stronger pieces. So please ensure that you condition your clay once again after leaching. Notice how the clay cracks when I fold it. It's a sign that the clay needs to be conditioned evenly. This won't happen, uh, I mean this wasn't happening before leaching if you remember. But after leaching the plasticizers have been soaked out and has made the clay a little brittle. So once I start passing this through the pasta machine to condition it, I will try to reduce the cracking and breaking of the clay. So let's see what happens when the sheet goes through the pasta machine. Watch how this clay has developed cracks on the surface and also the edges. It's almost at the verge of shredding. This will require several passes through the pasta machine till it stops behaving like this. So till then handle the sheet gently and keep passing, pressing the edges you know to avoid breakage and fragments because those can stain your clay machine and uh, uh, stain the other uh, colors that you might pass through it. Just to clarify the clay is still very soft and it's not hard. It's not become hard because of the leaching. It's just that it needs to be conditioned and avoid cracking. So there are hardly any bubbles when I pass it through the pasta machine. Just notice that there's hardly any bubbles. Definitely a good sign. Just don't get scared and uh, give up on this clay if it starts tearing and shredding into fragments. This is normal since you have uh, 
change the composition of this clay through leaching and only condition can restore the uh, true nature of this clay so you need to condition it by passing it through the pasta machine a minimum of 20 times 20 25 times till it comes back to its normal state so I'm showing you how bad it can get so that you understand it's completely normal if your clay starts behaving like this and starts shredding on, shredding on you. I don't believe editing this is the best way to prepare you with the leaching and the conditioning process. It, it takes a little bit of time and patience but that's how it is because you have completely changed the composition of the clay. I just pinch the edges a little so that uh, very less of it gets stuck in the rollers it's just to ensure that my clay machine just doesn't get contaminated by colors now do you see how it's not shredding so just that you don't have to get scared if your clay starts shredding If you see it is start behaving a little bit better than it was just a while back. So I keep doing this till I stop seeing the clay crack on the edges. That is a sign that my clay has become well conditioned. I just press the edges just to ensure that uh, it doesn't shred and leave pieces or small uh, elements in my clay machine. See that? A lot better. It's getting there. You see how it's cracking a little less now? It's not breaking like it was a while back. It's behaving a lot better. And you have to keep conditioning it till you stop seeing these cracks. And if you see, there are hardly any bubbles that are happening on the surface here. So, that's how you make clay listen to you. The cracking is a sign that it needs to be conditioned more. Always keep an eye out for the cracks. Sure, I think in five or six passes this will be completely conditioned clay. So yeah, definitely this clay does not require more leaching because it's not very sticky also and it's just the right amount of softness quite workable. I finally managed to condition the clay. Uh, quite happy with how it feels. No cracks, no bubbles. The next test would be how it cures under the prescribed temperature and bake time. So let's see how this clay performs uh, under the 
prescribed temperature on the packaging. Okay, so before I talk about how this variant performed in the oven, I'd like to talk about baking polymer clay just in general because there are two things to keep in mind while baking. One is temperature and second is the surface on which you'll be baking. Uh, for temperature, investing in an oven thermometer is like the wisest decision when baking polymer clay because uh, most ovens, new or old, uh, it doesn't matter how new it is, uh, most of them are off on their temperature settings which is like the most crucial factor for the chemical reaction to take place. Uh, the chemical reaction ensures that your clay cures properly. So the thermometer will actually help you set the exact temperature as per the brand guidelines. Uh, each brand has its own temperature requirements and this can prevent bur burning or uh, probably even under baking of your pieces uh, which is one of the most common problems people complain about when they're baking polymer clay. And the second part of baking is to find a good surface to bake on. What I use is a glass slab that I got custom cut from a glass shop nearby. So um, you can also use a ceramic tile or even a steel plate. Just remember that if you bake clay directly on the slab or whatever surface you're using, you are bound to get shiny spots on the clay that faces down. So for avoiding this, you can put a sheet of plain printer paper to get smooth surfaces on your clay. Otherwise, you can get really ugly, um, shiny spots and bubbles on the surface that touches this, uh, the baking surface you put the clay on. Another thing that I use is a foil container that you usually get with your deliveries, food deliveries at home. You can buy like a bunch of these from Amazon and I use that to cover my pieces while they are baking so that it regulates the temperature inside the foil container and ensures that the temperature is consistent throughout the baking time. Okay, so now coming back to the test pieces of this particular clay that I had tested. I baked them in three different variations. So the first one was a prescribed temperature and the time as per the brand instructions. So I just stuck to what was given to me in the manual. The second was increased temperature by 5 degrees centigrade and I baked it for one hour. The third was decreased it by the uh, 5 degrees centigrade and baked it for just 20 minutes. I'm assuming most pieces under this segment will be under baked. So for this, I used my oven thermometer to guide me on the correct temperature and get the exact temperature in my oven. So here are my test pieces. The variance prescribed temperature is between 120 to 130 degrees centigrade and the bake time is 30 to 40 minutes. So I have taken 130 degrees centigrade as the prescribed temperature and I've baked it for 30 minutes. Uh, I'm assuming anywhere between 30 to 40 minutes should be the ideal temperature. So I've just taken 30 minutes to see if that works. 125 and 135 separately at uh, three different uh, time frames. So this one was baked for 30 minutes, this one was baked for uh, one hour and this one was baked for 20 minutes. And uh, if I look at the quality of the bake, uh, it did not bubble at all. There has been absolutely no bubbling. Uh, it tends to also stick closer to the color. So we'll just check the color vari variation from uh, the original version. You see, the color has hardly changed post baking. And this is at the correct temperature prescribed temperature the color has not shifted uh, also if you look at the one that was under baked uh, here also the color has not shifted much and if I baked it at five degrees higher as well again the color has not shifted much it might have slightly dark darkened but it really doesn't make that much of a difference I doubt I can make much of a difference there has been a slight variation in the color I don't know if you can see it on the camera but uh, not much so yeah 
that's the difference that uh, uh, we saw in the three variants. Uh, we'll now check for the strength of this particular clay. Uh, this was baked at the correct temperature. I'll just check how flexible and strong this particular variation is. You can see that there is a strain on the clay but it is yeah if you see it does tend to get some stress marks but that is actually quite normal because if you do that to pvc as well even pvc will face the strain and uh, i don't think anyone should be uh, <laughs> bending their uh, clay creations like this so yeah this does tend to break it has broken uh, I'm assuming this will also give me a similar result. Um, yes, this one, this actually snapped. This one still resisted a bit, but this one snapped. So, um, if baked at the correct temperature, they do tend to um, break. Let me see if increasing the temperature has made any difference to the strength of the clay. This third piece also tends to um, get some stress marks when I bend it. So I'm assuming I'll have to increase it by 30 minutes more to bake it, but it's definitely stronger than the other two pieces. This might also crack if I put further stress, but this tends to be far more stronger than the other two pieces. I'm going to give it 30 more minutes so that it completely bakes and bonds together. But increasing the time has definitely made an impact on the strength of the piece. Also notice none of the pieces have had any bubbles, any plucking or uh, any white weird sediments happening on their surface. So clearly the clay stands well when it comes to texture after baking. Uh, it gives a very smooth surface as well. Let's revisit the pros of the classic variant and I use the number 14 red. This variant showed very close to no change in the color after baking and has a very good pigment ratio and opacity. It also doesn't show bubbles or plucking before or after baking and also comes in good packaging. Good quantity for the price that they charge. The downside of using this variant is it requires leaching for most projects and will also require a longer bake time than prescribed on the manual. So I hope this review was helpful. As they say there's no bad clay, you're probably using it wrong and not for the intended purpose if it's not behaving the way you want it to. Hit like if this helped you in understanding the right projects for this particular variant. For more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel Dilly Rouge Art or hit the bell icon down below for notifications on my next videos. Bye for now. Enjoy clay.